Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Welcome to the channel. So March is considered this month of emotional processing and not just renewal and rebirth for so many reasons. Although it is a month of dynamic renewal and rebirth, okay, for so many reasons. Not only is March the anticipated month where we celebrate the astrological new year, Aries season, and the spring equinox, which falls in the new moon in Aries this year, but March 2023 features a lot of astro activity in Aries, in addition to many power planets changing signs after years and months of being in the same sign. There's Mars, which has been in Gemini for seven, seven months, changing signs, and the power outer planets Saturn and Pluto finally change signs, which are the most talked about powerful transits ushering in dynamic changes, defining the next 20 years for the world, okay? And so for a full astrology breakdown, including psychic oracle insight, on how Saturn and Pluto are expected to bring changes in the world and in your personal lives, right? Um, you know, like higher lessons, spiritual advice on the sort of tests that these planetary changes will bring for you according to your zodiac sign. Check out the new video posted on this channel and linked below. But if you don't know, Saturn is the planet of karmic rewards for your efforts, for better or worse, and it forces you to be accountable, to mature, and to gain mastery, and it will do so by placing challenges and to find limitations in the areas of your life related to whatever sign and house it is in, right? So that you are forced to learn spiritual and practical lessons for growth. And it has been in Aquarius for the last three years and finally moves into Pisces on March 7th. But because Saturn was in Capricorn prior to Aquarius since 2017 and is the ruler of both, Saturn uh, being the ruler of both Capricorn and Aquarius, right? While Pluto has been in Capricorn, which is also ruled by Saturn, right, since 2008, we have actually been in a Saturnian age of rulership for the last 15 years, okay? So truly, if things have felt tough for you in a particular area of your life for the for the last 10 to 15 years, right? You're not crazy. <laughs> and it is exactly because of this heavy Saturnian age influence. And it's been really hard for cardinal immutable signs in particular, right? And, you know, this energy has brought societal karmas to the surface, right? In a way that we can't ignore anymore. So, Pluto finally enters Aquarius on March 23rd, just two days after the astrological new year and spring equinox new moon in Aries, which it will form a sextile with, right? So this is a powerful new moon. And then two days after that, on March 25th, Mars finally exits out of Gemini after being in the sign for seven months, right? Since August 2022. So those tidbits alone just give you a taste of why Mar March's uh, astrology is hyped, is anticipated, and considered dynamic, right? Because it's going to bring some climaxes, some closures, and just some energetic shifts for some cycles to end and begin, right? And it'll launch us into some renewal, growth, innovation, and big changes in the world that really sets a trajectory, right, for this new year and beyond. So take a moment, give this video a like, and subscribe to the channel. Cozy in as we get into some UA light celestial insight from the stars, right? And the cards related to the collective astrology predictions, and then your individual horoscope and psychic tarot insight, right? On challenges, um, what you don't see coming, and spiritual advice for March 2023. So the energetic theme of March really is about us being at this crossroads, right? And where, you know, we're going to experience illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and ultimately some karmic closures 
hopefully, right? Um, and we can think of March as both this month of emotional release and sobering reflection surrounding these important questions of how did you get here, right? And what happened to certain hopes and dreams and, you know, these also these moments of excitement surrounding where you will go from here and where you can go from here with all that you know now from the last 15 years of change, challenges, limitations, and hardships in your personal life, but also the world. The world has changed so much in relationship to these transits, right? And so it won't be a sort of neat linear process and just March being, oh, just a great month and da 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 da. You know, it's like, yeah. But, you know, many of you are already experiencing, you know, this sort of roller coaster of emotions and these sort of triggering experiences, you know, being at these crossroads. And it's a part of this collective energetic process, you know, of release and reflection and then some renewal and rebirth. And that will extend, you know, into April throughout Aries season, okay? And so this mix of experiences and emotions, you know, being a bit of a roller coaster is punctuated by transits at the beginning of the month, for example, where we begin March still in Pisces season, right, with Mercury entering Pisces as well on March 7th, where it's going to make a conjunction with Saturn in this critical degree of exiting Aquarius and entering into Pisces, right? And this is going to be that energy, you know, of like some emotional, but also some sober analysis and reflection about the past and, you know, your future. And on this very same day, you know, this 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 sort of uh, dualistic energy, right? It's also punctuated by the fact that on this same day, Venus in Aries makes a conjunction with Jupiter in Aries at 12 degrees, while Jupiter is in this sort of two degree looming conjunction with Chiron, you know, and Chiron is the wounded karmic healer, right? And so this is happening and sort of setting the energy these first two weeks of March, right? Until that uh, conjunction between Jupiter and Chiron becomes exact on March 12th, right? And so this puts this emphasis, right, on potentially being emotionally triggered and having to transmute these like painful emotions and experiences and, you know, trying to see and accept and hold on to the higher wisdom that these experiences in the past and the present have brought you, right? And so from the beginning, March 2nd, through the full moon on the 7th, and through the end of the full moon weekend, which ends with that Jupiter and Chiron conjunction on the 12th, we have Venus and Mercury's conjunctions with Jupiter and with Saturn and the full moon illuminations, which connects with Uranus and Mars, sort of gifting you news and insight or an experience that is perhaps surprising, emotional, and sobering in a sort of spectrum of lighthearted or devastating ways, right? But to ultimately bring you closure of some sort, right? So that you accept the truth of something and um, be emotionally and spiritually liberated to strategize how to move forward, right? It, and it, this could happen in a number of ways. It could be um, a conflict an apology or reconciliation attempt that you never thought you'd get from a parent, a family member, or an old twin flame, right? Um, situations with a boss, and even an opportunity to, you know, consider your personal boundaries, your personal ethics, and your desires, right? And really be empowered in enforcing your boundaries and moving towards your desires in the future. It could be news about a mentorship or a partnership that has lucrative long-term benefits 
or it could be news of a conflict, right, related to boundaries being crossed and issues with ethical values and beliefs in relationships, right? This is energy that it could even bring you like a surprise marriage proposal, right? It could be even a financial gift or a financial proposition. It could also be news about an opportunity to learn and travel. This Jupiter and Aries transit is so duly connected to uh, learning and traveling in higher education, right? And so with these placements, March 3rd, 3-3, Right, is also an, an auspicious day to take action and initiate an opportunity for yourself by being optimistic, looking your best, and having an important meeting or shooting your shot, and generally taking some important step toward some larger dream and, and steering your destiny. It's a good day for lighting a seven-day prayer candle and being in ritual to release old energy and to ground and welcome in new energy, right? For the next seven days, from March 3rd through March 10th, three days before and after the full moon on March 7th. And, you know, a time to really connect with your guides, the great mother who presides over the grace of Saturn. We are all about the divine feminine and the great mother here and for connecting with your higher self. So during that time, definitely spend time visualizing, downloading, and speaking what you truly desire for your life, especially because with the full moon astrology, we have the sun in Pisces making a harmonious connection with Uranus and Taurus while it's also illuminating the moon in Virgo, right? Making the full moon uh, sort of sextile with Uranus, right? And with that in the mix, it really suggests high spiritual, psychic, and creative energy um, and surprises, right? But the thing is, is that it squares Mars suggesting you know possible conflict and even a uh, fire-based natural disasters um literally in terms of what this degree um is associated with right so take note of your own surroundings and the news around the full moon time related to fire-based natural disasters and um any sort of fire-based emergencies um so for more information on the full moon astrology and how it will be affecting your sign, take a look at the video posted on the channel for more details on how to really work with the energy of this Virgo full moon this week. Okay, so this energy of illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and karmic closures initiated at the beginning of the month will really continue and build through mid-March between the 11th and the 17th with a number of emotional roller coaster transits, right, including that Jupiter Chiron conjunction until we reach the energetic shift and the rebirth, right, of the new year and the new moon in Aries and the spring equinox, March 19th and onward through the last two weeks of the month, okay? But let's discuss that week, that tricky week of March 11th through the 18th, okay? So we have the um, 11th being a day where there is a sextile between Venus and Aries and Mars and Gemini, and then Mercury and Pisces making a sextile with Uranus and Taurus, okay? And um, this is a Saturday that's actually really good for initiating important conversations, um, coming to agreements and resolves, possibly in your favor with any conflicts, from having increased confidence and resolve about what it is that you actually desire um, as a sort of result or um, resolve with some sort of situation. It could be, you know, um, you doing spiritual, creative, and psychic energy work, 
um, it's definitely a good weekend for energy healing where people may be receiving um, energetic upgrades right in their um, physical emotional and spiritual bodies okay and then you know this then the next day is that Jupiter conjunct Chiron right and that is that sort of dynamic energy and um, but to be quite honest, this Jupiter conjunct Chiron energy could bring so many different things. It could bring, you know, some sort of um, trajectory defining news or experience, right? Um, it could be some sort of breakthrough, truly, in a number of ways. And um, definitely look at that Jupiter and Aries video to see um, more about this, okay? But it's also giving, you know, long lost twin flame, reaching out to you, all kind of things could be happening with that, all right? And then from the 13th through the 17th, we have a little bit of a doozy here with the Sun and the Mercury. Sun, not the Mercury. Sun and Mercury <laughs> and Neptune all making a conjunction with each other in the sign of Pisces and then all squaring Mars and Gemini okay and um, then we have Venus in Aries um, squaring Pluto and sextiling Saturn right and Venus is also moving into Taurus in the midst of this too right so this is definitely climactic and uh, frustrating energy, right? And any conflicts that are sort of looming, things sort of reaching a, uh, a boiling point, a point of illumination and being at a crossroads and potential climax, right? This could be stalemates and conflicts being gaslit or emotionally manipulated by people like co-workers, friends, siblings, partners in love and or work, even teachers and classmates, right? Um, given that this is Mars and Gemini. So this could definitely be, you know, these encounters with, you know, people refusing to be accountable and honest about their deception or passive aggression. Um, and, you know, being in situations where you really have to seek to maintain emotional mastery and where people you know on on all sides might be uh, you know not trying to compromise their beliefs in some matters where they feel that there is some distrust in the midst and there's tensions around you know values and you know these matters may or may not be involving assets and property ownership and you know um People just trying to argue their case about what they believe they deserve, right? And it just really can be emotionally triggering and confusing. Um, and, you know, where you may be confused about what best actions to take. And that just ble bleeding over into all areas of your life. Feeling confused in your daily routines. What to do in these interactions. And even questioning your goals and your direction in life. And... You know, it's just emotional meltdown energy. And, you know, these experiences could interfere with other more creative and uplifting ways you desire to use your time, energy, and attention. You know, especially because, again, it's this mix of opportunity, um, you know, in addition to just emotional turmoil. And so the advice with these uh transits right during the middle of the middle of march is you know mercury is going to be squaring mars but it's also going to be sextiling pluto and then venus is going to be squaring pluto but it's going to be sextiling saturn right and so karma is really involved here and cosmic order and you know there is a sort of advice here to take your time and responses if you can you know respond to things after or around you know the new moon and really stick to facts and be calmly assertive if you must engage stand your ground and resolve something um there's a higher chance of being more empowered emotionally stable um and supported in steering your outcomes um later right and then um also, 
wait, disengage, and also don't take bait, you know, um, being baited into any sort of emotionally manipulative circumstances. And, you know, with people who you just no, are just not going to be honest and take accountability, right? If you can, if there is some situation where you can, go around, talk to higher-ups, talk to senior managers, right? Because it's, it's really this tricky energy um, where it's like, either you're going to wait, either you're going to be able to handle things with emotional calm, or you're going to disengage, or you're going to want to burn it all down, okay? <laughs> so... You know, that's that's really the mix, right? So um, when Venus enters into Taurus, you know, we'll begin to feel a bit more grounded. Um, there'll be more of a focus on pleasure, self-care, beauty, comfort, and, you know, thinking about your financial security and stability. With Venus entering into Taurus and um, there being that square with Pluto and sextile with Saturn, this could mean a number of things. Um, someone could be trying to earn your love or your business um, by showing you how they've changed, matured, or what they have to offer. And this could just be energy of resolving some financial, legal, and even tax disputes and making some sort of financial decisions in the interest of your long-term best interests, right? This could be dealing with banks. This could be dealing with, you know, just institutions. This could be um, having business negotiations, right? And in general, this sort of configuration there is definitely giving something related to fintech, digital banking, digital currencies, cybersecurity with digital banking. Um, I'm thinking that this could even be a time where we hear something on the FTC decision on non-competes, right? Um, definitely check out that Saturn and Pluto video um, regarding some of the predictions that I had related to the astrology and how that's going to manifest in politics and governmental things, right? And in general, related to that, um, this astrology could mean a number of things in terms of global and political events. And I just want to touch on really quickly the Mercury and Venus conjunctions at the beginning of the month, and um, then all of this energy that then transpires the remaining of the month. It could illuminate. Um, you know, a lot of news about national leaders, like some sort of breaking news, right, about a national leader. Um, this could be a time where there is more aid that is able to reach earthquake victims. Um, there could be more national news coverage and discussion about um, consensus being reached um, and acknowledgement about the chemical and gas leak origins of COVID. Um, that's kind of in the air as a sort of controversy. And then there's also controversies of Korea's nuclear bomb testing drills with the U.S. That could uh, get more attention in the news. And uh, especially given that the full moon is emphasizing something related to fire um, and maybe um, natural disasters, just something, something with fire, right? And, and uh, certain things in the news just gaining a lot of traction and attention, right, with these Mercury and a Jupiter conjunctions and the Venus and Jupiter conjunction, Jupiter and Chiron, and all of these things, right? So there could also even be anger and outrage in current legal battles and the pending decisions around student loan forgiveness in the U.S. and just more continued issues related to education in the news in general. And this is courtesy of, you know, the square with Mars and Gemini that is being highlighted in those um, configurations. All right. So now let's get to the last two weeks of March. Okay. So we have Mercury um, and the sun entering into Pisces on the 19th through the 20th. And then that new moon in the spring equinox at the critical zero degrees, right? Happening on the 21st. And, you know, this is a major new moon because of the critical degree 
because it's also in a sort of loose conjunction with Mercury and Neptune, and also sextiling Pluto in that critical degree as it's entering Aquarius, right? And so um, it's really that energy that brings in all the newness. Um, it's a powerful new moon for manifestation, confident action, right? And so stay tuned for an upcoming video where we'll discuss more about the new moon astrology and how to best work with the energies and um, any particular predictions for the signs, right? And so in the meantime, take a look at the video that goes into more detail about the Pluto and Aquarius transit, right? How that's going to be powerfully changing things since that new moon is going to be aspecting Pluto and Aquarius, okay? And then on the 25th, just two days after Pluto entering Aquarius, we got Mars finally changing signs, entering Cancer after being in Gemini for seven months. And this is a welcome energetic change, but Mars does not like being in Cancer, okay? And Mars in Cancer is also a recipe for emotionally manipulative energy. Um, and passive aggressive behavior. But the thing is, is that there can perhaps be more emotional tolerance in your dealings with people, right? And you being able to sort of channel your um, emotions um, to reach outcomes and results that you desire, right? In your communication. And then um, between the 26th and the 28th, we have Mercury um, in Aries um, becoming visible and then also making a conjunction with Jupiter. And this means that it is such a great time for starting new things, launching new things. It's great for marketing. This could be a time where you're receiving great news, clarity, right, on your directions with long-term goals and plans even. You could be receiving information related to visas or spotting new opportunities related to international travel or relocation, or even study or work abroad opportunities, right? And um, I mentioned in my Jupiter and Aries video that this could be a particular conjunction where there are perhaps some announcements with more countries instituting nomad visas. Um, and then this energy is good for submitting applications and pitches and receiving news on applications and pitches and generally a great time to put your best foot forward and make long-term plans but also to you know be confident and enterprising but also realistic in your plans and to understand that there could be unforeseen circumstances that arise um, that you may not be able to plan for immediately right so don't overcommit don't overpromise um, do what you can with what you can with what you know <laughs> but this mercury and aries conjunction with jupiter is happening as jupiter is also becoming invisible right so again there could be unforeseen news and circumstances right and then we end the month with mars and cancer trining saturn and pisces and venus and taurus conjuncting uranus okay so this is um the Mars and Cancer trine with Saturn and Pisces in particular is really about being able to channel and express your emotions and ideas to reach people in an effective way and to really kind of attract outcomes and long-term results that you desire in your work and love relationships and in your career, right? And um, it's just, it's good for emotional stability and emotional determination and resolve with something, right? Cancer is a cardinal water sign, right? And Saturn and Pisces is a sort of stabilizing influence, right? For thinking about how to make your dreams a reality, okay? And then with the Venus and Taurus conjunction with Uranus, this is surprises, right? This could be surprises in finances and relationships. So it's definitely good for making sure that you're aware of your budget um and um this is also energy where you can meet new people um where you could get new ideas about something creative right um and that you could do business-wise uh related to fashion beauty 
the beauty industry, um, even music, um, something creative, right? And so, you know, Uranus is all about um, innovation and um, getting ideas, right? And then one of the things I forgot to mention is that, you know, both of these, Mars and Cancer trying Saturn and Pisces with Venus and Taurus conjunct Uranus, it's like this could even be like break up and make up energy, right? And then being stronger in the long run from learning some kind of lesson, right? So it'll be really interesting to just keep a watch on kind of what transpires for you synchronistically along this time. We're going to get more things moving into Taurus. Um, so definitely... Uh, Take note of anything related to finances and relationship that begins to kind of sprout, you know, in your life around this time. And so, so to wrap up this collective reading, um, I received some channeled angel number messages um, as some spiritual advice, right? And the numbers that I got were 1133, which breaks down to eight, um, and the number 511, right? And eight in particular and 511 are really sort of emphasizing that March and also what these transits are really saying is that it's a month of renewed karma, that your actions have the potential to renew your karma, right? In a number of ways, it could end karmic cycles, um, but it could also even extend certain karmas, right? Depending on your actions. And so um, that's also what Saturn and Pluto are really all about, okay? So it is just being really emphasized here. So I'm gonna read the um, sort of spiritual understanding of the angel number 511. And a five is a number that is all about making positive life choices and important changes and about personal freedom. And it's about having to be adaptable and resourceful and to stay motivated to make progress. And similarly, the angel number one and master number 11 are also, you know, these numbers that all there are all about portals of newness and beginnings, um, inspiration, and, you know, um, manifesting, right? It's about spiritual awakening and development and about us connecting to our higher selves and our divine life purpose and soul mission. And so 511 is this message from the angels, from the divine, about the auspicious changes and new beginnings in your life. These changes have come about through your intentions and actions to better your life and incorporate a more spiritual approach. This is also a directive to incorporate a more spiritual approach, I'm getting, right, as you deal with any of these um, circumstances that surface during this time of karmic closure, right? And so the angels encourage you to make changes per your soul's promptings and intuitive urgings. 511 suggests that some karmic life changes are ahead and occurring in your life right now. And so your angels angels want you to remain courageous and positive throughout these transitions they support and surround you with love and healing and this number appears when it's a message that your intentions are manifesting rapidly right and that is absolutely related to um pluto being an aquarius and Saturn being in Pisces, right? So therefore keep your thoughts and focus positive and optimistic, maintain a positive attitude about the changes happening in your life. And it says old and negative habits, patterns and beliefs are being replaced with new, more positive ones. And this attracts and manifests further positive energies and opportunities for you. Go with the flow. Okay, so that is the sort of spiritual advice for the collective. And we're going to now get into your personal horoscopes and tarot psychic spiritual advice for the month. Hello there, Geminis. So the planetary movements last month and this month are continuing to spotlight an overall question of legacy for you. 
long-term career visions, how they include higher learning, spirituality, and higher wisdom, international travel, publishing, and product development, and whether you know your true net worth potential and power of influence. The universe is supporting efforts to majorly increase your wealth and create a powerful legacy through the success of publishing media, tech, and creative projects, and from expanding your networks, your transnational markets and reach, and connection to like really key supportive resources, and even locals and mentors. While overall, the larger outer planets have been facilitating a long, powerful spiritual and emotional transformation for you to really develop a strengthened, supportive connection with your inner and higher self and Christ consciousness, right? That informs your sense of self-worth and true net worth and financial literacy, all to enable you to better vet people you engage or work with, including family and any of these powerful moguls and mentors, right? So that you don't give your power away anymore, right? Due to operating from a wounded space of self-doubt and low self-confidence, self-trust, and self-worth, right? You're multi-talented and extremely intelligent. And the questions that continue to loom in addition to this overall question on legacy, right, as the new year gets closer, is what are your career your career convictions, and are you committed and spiritually fit to see them through, right? How will you play your hand? How have you given your power away? Will you continue to give your power away? How can you and how will you call it back and increase it? Are you surrounded by people you trust? Are you versed in spiritual and psychic self-defense in instances you have to deal with people you distrust and, you know, to essentially navigate the matrix? And it's like because of your expanded and expanding knowledge and your wealth potential, the universe is really testing your ability to master the art of chess, right? Using your high self-awareness, discernment, and facts of how to be in the matrix and not of it, right? How to play your hand but not reveal your hand. And Mars's long stay in your sign has also been a part of this, right? Mars is wrapping its long stay in your sign and it moves into your second house of finances, personal values, and self-worth. While Pluto is wrapping up its stay in your eighth house, which is also a financial house and one where a lot of, you know, healing um, happens in addition to a lot of these things kind of triggering um, a particular kind of... Um, growth in your financial literacy, right? And it's like Pluto in the eighth, um, eighth through the ninth, right? It's like it's triggering conflicts, tension, and truths for you to face, you know, in this long journey of healing deep core wounds and trauma, you know, of betrayal, abandonment, self-confidence, trust in yourself and others, and even your career convictions, you know, and your sense of self-worth, right? And it's like all of this has been happening for a very long time. It's been amplified by Mars and your sign, right? So that you truly understand your net worth, right? And, um, you know, the cards in the astrology indicate that this month really gives you some important revelations of promising opportunities, insights around your potential, and also even a last sort of karmic test in these areas. So from the beginning of the month, um, March 2nd through the full moon on the 7th and through the end of the full moon weekend, leading into that Jupiter and Chiron um, conjunction in your uh, 11th house, um, we have Venus making a conjunction with Aries in the 11th house and the Mercury making a conjunction with Saturn and Pisces in your 10th house. And then the full moon illuminating, you know, your 10th and your 4th houses while it also connects with Uranus in your 12th 
and Mars in your sign, right? So to break that all down, essentially what it means is that it's going to bring you these illuminating revelations, these opportunities, but also even controversial feedback, a crossroads, and these sort of karmic climaxes that bring some sort of karmic closure and even a breakthrough, right? That is liberating, perhaps really surprising, even angering and emotionally triggering and ultimately sobering, right? Related to all that I just mentioned. But certainly career achievement and reputation are highlighted, right? And most likely related to your projects involving social media, technology, where you're sharing beliefs, ideas, and new creative projects, and getting increased attention from good and bad feedback from social groups, networks, alliances, right? And the cards are really telling me that I'm tapping into a few different collectives of Geminis and scenarios, right? And you will know who you are and what resonates. For some of you, the cards and the astrology are really speaking to the powerful physical, emotional, and relationship and financial tests and breakthroughs that you have been having and that are still in store for you this month and onward, given the ways that you have and are continuing to be dedicated to strengthening your mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual fitness, right? And to transform your career, your image, and your reputation through this strong connection with a pure, like, God source, you know, and, and you know, strong mental health that is continuing to help you gracefully and smartly navigate relationships, trickster energy, gossip, drama, smear campaigns, and even covert sab sabotage energy, right? Where this month, it looks like there's a true, you know, breakthrough and this era of moving forward powerfully to thrive, you know, after this sort of hero's journey. And then for many of you, I'm also seeing that some new direction that you're moving in with conviction or the alliances and partnerships you're committing to this month will elevate your career, expand your reach, and even get you critical feedback or backlash, right? And really test your convictions. I'm seeing a scenario where some are tasked with cleaning up something in your career, your image, and reputation this month to realign your career choices, your branding, published art or messages to really reflect your core values and where there may be a need to even truly reconsider, question and refine your convictions, your core values, choices, your image and who and what you're letting influence them, okay? Whether that is People, the public, insecurity and the wounds that I mentioned, but even ancestors and your notions of the divine and spiritual beings that you connect with and consider to be guiding you and speaking through you. Okay. And this came through so powerfully. And it's like, it's really deep. And there's this question of like, who's your God? Who's your God? Is God in your image? Are you made in your God's image? <laughs> What's their story? What unconscious conditioning are you subscribing to via the ethers that is unconsciously and subconsciously influencing your embodiment and ways of being, your sense of self-worth on earth? How you fashion yourself? Is your God a slave? <laughs> are you a servant? Or are you equal with your guides? Are your ancestors and etheric guides healed? Are you connecting with true master teachers? Is your God actually limiting your dharma, your God power, and your potential to experience heaven on earth? And you know, there can be a lot of ego and wounding in spiritual awakening. I mean, oftentimes, I, I mean, at the very core of it, ego, death, and wounding is one of the ways to accelerate spiritual awakening, right? 
And so by default, there can be a lot of ego and wounding in spiritual awakening and in career advancement, right? That leads to confusion, false gods, bigger ego versus true ego death, and slavery by another name, right? When they are separate processes alone, right? These things, these things can happen, right? Just on their own. But it's it's amplified, especially in this moment where careers in public spiritual influencing and healing are intertwined and where there is this mass spiritual awakening of everyone across industries. And there's so much talk about being chosen and being a messenger. So I'm getting very clearly this question for you to sit with, right? And this is also all courtesy of those full moon configurations that I mentioned, Pluto and Neptune's placements for the past few years, right? That have catalyzed this sort of awakening journey for you. And also Neptune's square with Mars, right? That has been happening on and off. And where this month in particular, the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune all conjunct each other and square Mars in your sign. And you have these in your house of career while you have Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, and a new moon like in your 11th house of blessings, dissemination of your ideas, your image, or business brand via social media and marketing, and your relationship with social groups this month. And so with the cards, there's there's definitely something here about attempting to transform image and reputation after, um, you know, a, a hero's journey. Or for some of you, there's definitely something here about attempting to transform image and reputation after a PR error of judgment related to your image, related to a collaboration or a message, and there being some attempt to appear unfazed, right? And others, you are being inspired to make these kinds of changes due to some external or internal inspiration, right? And again, I... It's 2.22 on the clock. And then when I got this message what that I'm about to say now, to seek your center, your truth, your lane, and to be authentic, that came through at 1.33, right? So it's, it's very clear how important these, these things are, how tied they are to some deep spiritual questioning and clarity that you're urged to continue to attain. And there's this message here, you know, don't be deceptive or don't and don't be deceived as well. And um, just in general, carefully consider on all levels if anyone that you take advice from could be leading you astray or into blessed, perfect alignment with your divine destiny. Because all of that is like in the cards and in the stars for you. So it's really important for you to trust your power to make decisions in your best interests without paranoia or fear, right? To really get to this sense of true personal power and clarity. And if you do have any confusion, you know, to just connect with the energy of divine love for guidance, you know? Um, And this energy of illumination, revelation, opportunity, crossroads, you know, initiated at the beginning of the month, We'll continue and build through mid-March between, you know, the 11th through the 17th until we reach the energetic shift for rebirth on the new year in the new moon in Aries in the spring equinox, right? And that is all happening in your 11th house of rewards, of opportunity, of social media and travel and, um, you know, connection with social groups and um, just expanded reach. And so these last two weeks of March, you could be experiencing viral moments, more information about finances to help with financial and travel planning, um, financial increases from launching and releasing new projects or products online, 
you know, things you start and launch and the connections that you make could be incredibly transformative and blessed in the interest of your long-term goals. And again, that's why all of these other like really spiritual, you know, themes and these questions and these tests around discernment are there for you. Okay. And so, um, with the last two weeks of March with, you know, Venus moving into Taurus, um, it's making a square to Pluto and also a sextile to Saturn. So some of this also points to how, um, you know, you you could be trying, you know, with your projects, this, this is, you know, you trying to earn, you know, business, you know, by showing, um, how you've changed and matured and what you have to offer. Um, but this configuration could also point to, you know, someone else trying to earn your love, your business by showing how they've changed, matured, or what they have to offer as well. You definitely could be resolving some financial and legal and even tax issues and just making some sort of financial and career decisions that are in the interest of your long-term best interests and where you are implementing the wisdom from the karmic lessons and, you know, insights from any conflicts, climaxes, and experiences this month and in general from a time prior, right, throughout this long journey, right, that helps to influence your long-term mindfulness regarding your intentions and your actions and your enterprises. And so in general, you know, continue to grow and deepen your connection with your internal truth, your internal core, and your connection to source, right? And, you know, continue to communicate your boundaries, continue to advocate and negotiate for yourself based on high self-worth, and continue to be really mindful and strategic in how you reveal things, how you go about your endeavors, you know, being a magician and a check and a chess master in the matrix, right? And in dealing with any sort of trickster energy and, you know, negotiations by, you know, fighting with facts and tapping into your inner CEO, your higher mind, your wisdom teachings, and your higher visionary goals, because they are all within reach. They are all within reach. And the divine is in the midst and really seeking to bless you powerfully this month and beyond Gemini's. So I hope that this video was helpful. <laughs> and I hope it was helpful. It, there definitely was like, there are some hard hitting questions there. Um, so much has been happening for you in this sort of like spiritual warrior journey. And I want to say, congratulations to you all <laughs> congratulations you know congratulations many people won't tell you that many people won't tell you that and in some ways you seeking that has gotten you into some trouble has made you vulnerable to people who have wanted to take advantage of you take advantage of your wounds right and any insecurity that you may feel but the divine is proud of you and the divine is with you. The divine just wants you to continue to understand your relationship to divine love and divine intelligence, right? And how you are meant to embody it and share it and be blessed by it in return this lifetime. There's also this really important, you know, sort of uh, loving message here too, to not, you know, beat yourself up about any mistakes or, or be so paranoid about making the same mistakes that you don't um, take advantage of the opportunities and, you know, all of the goodness that is truly, truly available to you, right? And that is emphasized by this mistakes card. It says, if you feel you have made a mistake or indeed someone else has done so with impact on you, please do not feel bad about this. 
Treasure and value your mistakes and those of others around you. They are the cutting edge of our personal growth and evolution. Lean into the learning and celebrate your openness to grow. Okay, the spiritual journey is about, you know, testing you, but it, it's also about revealing to you like how truly, truly powerful you are. And, you know, about, again, what I mentioned, this this ability to be mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually fit. To know that you can transform and alchemize anything. Right? It's never a loss. It's never a loss. And with somebody with a mind like you, Gemini, you can you can you can think of the next best thing. You can you can transform every lesson into some divine intelligent and creative and innovative something to do next. You can always one up yourself and anybody else <laughs> around you, right? And then we have this card, right? That says be your brilliant self. It says be great today. Be brilliant. This card asks you to get in touch with the extraordinariness of everyday living. Go about your daily life doing everything to the very best of your ability. Be extraordinary in an ordinary way. Your brilliance will radiate into the world, creating more change than you could possibly imagine. All right? And so also there's this message here, gossip and drama. Just don't feed any gossip and drama. But also know that even with that too, when you're a divine alchemist, you can use that energy. <laughs> We're going to save that for, for another day. All right. Take good care of yourselves, Gemini. I wish you an incredible month. Leave this video a like and even offer some light-filled comments and encouragement for your fellow Geminis in the collective. And subscribe to the channel to keep up with additional content. Definitely check out the Saturn and Pluto video to learn a bit more about how they are working to help you in your career endeavors, right? It's definitely highlighting and going to be supporting any powerful transformations that you're making in the interest of your long-term goals. So check that out. And lastly, um, be sure to join us in our daily grace meditations. You'll find them in the shorts tab and on the community post every day to just help you in your gratitude journey, staying centered, staying motivated, and in alignment with your highest potential.